Hi, welcome back to Daphne's lecture. Last, uh, in my last video, our last lecture, we've been talking about Philippine inventions in the course of science, technology, and society. So today we will be moving on, or we, we will be moving forward with a new lecture for science, technology, and society. Um, in this lecture, okay, let me uh, share first my uh, screen. All right, so uh, for this topic today, or for this lesson, we will be uh, focusing on the intellectual revolution, specifically on the Copernican revolution, or Copernican revolution. So before we start, let us first talk about, uh, or let us answer the question, what is Copernican revolution? So what comes in your mind when you when you hear the words Copernican Revolution? All right, so to start with Copernican Revolution, this is a shift in the field of astronomy from a geocentric understanding of the universe centered around the Earth to a heliocentric understanding, which the sun is the center of the universe, as articulated by the Polish astronomer named Nicholas Copernicus in the 16th century. This shift marked the start of broader scientific revolution that set foundations of modern science and allowed science to flourish as an autonomous discipline within its own right. Basically, when you say Copernican revolution in a smaller or in a shorter context, it is about the shift in the intellectual or understanding about the center of the universe from the, uh, first Earth being as the center of the universe and then a shift or a change uh, to a sun or to the sun as being the center of the universe. So in this lesson, we'll be uh, focusing on this Copernican revolution. A long time ago, in the early times, people questioned what days or what created the days and nights. So they have to question uh, what causes the daytime or the daylight and what causes the nighttime or the night or the evening or what causes the dark. So there were a lot of questions before about these uh, days and nights or the sun and the moon. And people, they wanted to understand what heavenly bodies like stars, moons, and planets are. So this era or this age, people starts to wonder what is the stars all about or what is the star all about? What are planets about? And what are, what are the moons? all about. So the people started to question about the universe, the days, and the night, and the sun, and the moon, and all the heavenly bodies. And the invention of the telescope allowed the people to take a peek at the outer space, but more importantly, it has also intrigued them to know what is actually out there. At this time, they had to invent or telescope was invented so people had to see what was there in the outer space just like what you can see right there on your screen many of these philosophers agreed that planets moved around in circular motion and these and that these movements created days nights and among others with the use of telescope and when and many inventions among uh, scientists they have agreed what causes that? What causes the day and night is the revolution, or the, of the planets in the circular motion. So as you can see there in the picture, they have to do a. They have that intellectual revolution. They have that intellectual understanding, and they found an answer to the question: What causes the day and what causes the night? So in this stage, they have, they have gathered the answers that what causes day and night is their circulation or their revolution of this or the rotation of the planet in its circular motion rotation rather and there came a famous philosopher named claudius ptolemy stated that the planets as well as the sun and the moon moved in a circular motion around the sun this is the first philosopher or the first sign of scientist and astronomer as well who stated that what causes the day and night is the circulation motion uh, around the earth and this is how it looks like and this 
um, going back, Claudius Ptolemy, he authored or uh, he established this theory, geocentrism. Uh, in this theory, it says that the Earth is the center of the universe, just like what you can see there on your screen. That the sun and moon's revolution explained the existence of days and nights. He believed that the Earth was at the center of a concept known as geocentrism. So like what I've said, and this a theory in geocentrism, Earth is the center of the universe. To know more about this geocentrism, in geocentric model or geocentrism, it is a theory of the structure of the solar system in which Earth is assumed to be at the center of it all. The most highly developed geocentric model was that of Ptolemy of Alexandria, or the person that was mentioned just a minute ago. It was generally accepted until the 16th century, after which it was suspended by heliocentric models such as that of Nicholas Copernicus. So this theory has been challenged by the theory of Nicholas Copernicus. Just like this one that you can see on your screen in the 16th century, this man, Nicholas Copernicus, a Polish mathematician and astronomer at the same time, challenged the Ptolemy, uh, Ptolemaic model or the previous theory, which is the geocentric model. So what is this new theory? This new theory has been developed or established by Nicholas Copernicus, which is known to be the heliocentric model or heliocentrism. It suggests that the center of the solar system is not the Earth, but rather it is the sun. In heliocentric model or heliocentrism or centrism, it is a cosmological model in which the sun is assumed to lie at the near or the central point of the solar system or the universe. While the Earth and other bodies, our planets and moons revolved around the sun. And in the 15th century before Christ, the philosophers Philolos and Hysitas speculated separately that the Earth was a sphere revolving around or daily around some mystical central fire, which they referred to the sun that regulated the universe. And this is the illustration of heliocentrism, wherein the central point or the central part of the universe or the solar system is the sun and the planets are revolving around the sun. This is the theory of Nicholas Copernicus, which is known to be the heliocentrism theory or the heliocentric model. The idea of Nicholas Copernicus was rejected. It was rejected at first by the public. It appealed uh, many uh, since the religious belief had taught them that the earth was created before all other things. So there was a conflict. So there was a conflict, conflict between the teachings of the church and the theory of Nicholas Copernicus because based on the teachings of the church, in this time, in this time, it was believed that the earth is the beginning of everything. So there was a contradiction to your uh, contradiction of uh, beliefs and claims. That's why this uh, theory was rejected by the public at first. Copernicus was even persecuted as a heretic because his teachings were against that was widely accepted by the religion. So uh, basically this idea of Nicholas Copernicus was not accepted by the public because it goes against uh, the, the belief of the public which was the earth was the beginning or the center or the center of everything. So when you say heretic, by the way, the, the public considered uh, Nicholas as heretic. So when you means when you mean uh, when you say heretic, it means that it is a person who differs an opinion from established religious dogma, or refuses to uh, refuses to acknowledge uh, or accept revealed of truth. So basically, during this time, Nicholas Copernicus was the first one to go against the belief of the public that the Earth was the center of everything. So instead of Earth, according to Nicholas, it is the Sun as the center of the solar system or the universe. However, after some time, 
astronomers realized that Copernican model simplified the orbits of four planets. It also answered issues that could not be explained using the geocentric model. Other works that supported this model started to emerge well, as well. But there comes a time that this model well, by uh, Nicholas Copernicus was accepted by the public and many scientists arise or astronomers who have the same idea, supporting the idea of Nicholas Copernicus that the center of the universe or the solar system was the sun and the planets are revolving around it. It was eventually accepted by the people in a period which was called the birth of modern astronomy. So the moment that the people had accepted the theory of Nicholas Copernicus, that the sun was the center of the universe, this gave birth to the modern astronomy. This era began, began what was known as a scientific revolution, which resulted in a transformation of society's beliefs and thoughts. With the works of Nicholas Copernicus, it gave birth, again, as I've said, to this modern astronomy. At the same time, it gives a transformation, transformation of society's thoughts and beliefs about the knowledge about the center of the universe and the solar system and everything that goes with it. And then, before we end this video, what then? What do you think that is the concept, is the main concept of this Copernican revolution? It's very simple. In a simple context, the concept of this Copernican revolution is that astronomy, there was a paradigm shift. There was a change, big change in the beliefs or knowledge about the view of the center of the universe. Instead of Earth, it was then changed that it was changed to sun as being the center of the universe. So this is the content of this Copernican revolution, this change of knowledge, a paradigm shift from the idea that the center of the world is earth going to the center of the world, which is the sun. And that's it for a short lecture for today. I hope you like it. And if you think this video is helpful, you can click like below or subscribe so that you'll be notified for more videos, lecture videos. So I'll be soon uploading in my channel as well. And in my next lecture video, we will be, or I'll be sharing with you the lessons about uh, Darwinian theory. We are still, we will still be uh, discussing the intellectual revolution, but in the next video, it will be focused on the Darwinian revolution or the theory of evolution by Charles Darwin. Thank you so much, everyone, and take care and have a good day.